Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and today with a new topic of the discrete time Fourier series. Now first of all, excuse the mustaches, this is not Abhinandan, okay? This is the, your very own Salar Khan. Okay, so the new topic, the discrete time Fourier series. What would we do with the help of this topic? We would represent any given signal periodic signal in terms of complex exponential signals fine so we know we know it very well that this is only for the what for the periodic signals so what do we have first of all starting off with the definition of periodic signal a signal is periodic only if it it, it does what it satisfies the condition that x of n plus a capital N is equal to x of n where the smallest for all small values of n wait for all n where the capital N the smallest positive integer value of capital N is the fundamental period of the of the signal and this is what you know very well fundamental period and then you can have of course the fundamental frequency that is omega naught so omega naught the relation you know is 2 pi upon the fundamental period n so 2 pi upon n this is the signal the periodic signal in a discrete time domain fine now how do we need to represent it we want to represent it in terms of complex exponentials we want to represent it in terms of complex exponentials and those complex exponentials of course are also periodic <coughs> and 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 you know complex exponential is of the form <coughs> excuse me exponential of j omega naught n exponential of j omega naught n or if you take the value of omega naught as that one so you could say that this is equal to exponential of j 2 pi upon capital n into small n and the small n is the value integer value of time capital n is the fundamental period of the wave is that fine till here now now comes the term of harmonically related complex exponentials as in the previous case we also discussed them so we also have them over here we have the term harmonically related complex exponentials related complex exponentials so what do you have is they are represented by a set phi of k phi of n phi of n in the subscript they have k and they are equal to exponential of j k omega naught n and if again you write the value of omega naught so you can have j k 2 pi upon capital n into small n this is what the set of the harmonically related exponential signal is now there's a difference between the cardinalist time harmonically related exponentials and the discrete time again the 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 what the continuous time signals were represented as exponential of j k omega naught t right the difference in these two is what the difference is that in continuous time case for each and every different values of k you have a different value of complex exponential signal you have a different signal if i write it for each different value of k we have a different signal we have a different signal this was for the continuous time case we know it very well we have a basic video on this as well in the discrete time case as you increase k up to some limit we have different signals but once that limit is reached we have a repetition and what is that limit that limit is the fundamental period n 
that limit is the fundamental period n which means that if you increase k if you keep on increasing k what happens when you reach the value of k is equal to n you have repetition started you have repetition starting which means you don't have a unique value after n you have the same repetition back that's the difference if i can elaborate it further this means that if you have a phi not of if if let's say i do for k equal to 0 you have a phi not of n right for k equal to 1 you have a phi 1 of n for k equal to 2 phi 2 of n similarly the system goes on and on you have a phi n minus 1 of n and phi of n of n if this is I say about <clears throat> one period of the wave phi 0 phi 1 phi 2 phi 3 these are all different signals but they are different till n minus 1 they are different till n minus 1 when you reach the point phi capital n of n this means you have started repetition this signal phi n of n is back equal to this signal phi not of n these are two the exact copy of each other so that is why we say that we only have distinct values for n values of distinct signal for n values of k capital n values of k I can write over here distinct signals for capital N values of K after this we have repetition now after this you can have another signal that would be Phi n plus 1 of n so that signal that signal Phi n plus 1 of n that would be the exact copy of Phi 1 of n fine after that after that you can have a phi n plus 2 of n and this repeats so phi n plus 2 of n in this case now this would be the exact copy of phi 2 of n is that clear this was a basic concept now i'm having a cup of tea as well over here so what do we have is we have n number of unique signals n number of unique signals this you can write in that way as well a number of unique signals now now if I uh, you know have it as a linear combination if I have it as a linear combination I have one signal as this I have this so if I add this all together if I have a linear combination so what would I have linear combination and let's say I represent the linear combination by my input signal x of n so that would be what that would be the summation of k I'm telling you the limits let's say a k are the coefficients are the weights and then you have phi k of n the summation is important the summation would be over what the summation would be over an n interval the summation would be over n n interval or yes now what does this n interval mean this n interval mean the same point that after n values the signal would repeat so we're not interested in the repetition of it we would only go for the unique values of signals and these double uh, arrows indicate what that you can have any values of n any interval of n which means that if you're starting from zero so you need to go till n minus one because the repetition would start at n right then if you're starting at one if you're starting at one you need to go till n because n plus one would be again repeating like this similarly if you're starting at two you need to end at n plus one because n plus two would be again the repetition so this is it this is what i'm talking about so which means what which means what uh, i could write it generally that my phi k of n phi k of n is equal to phi k plus r of n where r is the integer multiple r is the integer multiple phi k is 0 0 plus n right 
1 n plus 1 this is what i've said the repetition the repetition okay the next point the linear combination so i've told you like this now uh, if you write it in that form let's see we write it in that form x of n x the linear combination x of n is what so that is of this form summation the interval is like this fine you have an a k you have phi k of n is that okay and now if i do it like this if i have my k interval is like this n a k is the weight and phi k of n are what they are these signals exponential of j k omega naught n or sometimes we are interested in in the time period of the wave so i could write that this is the interval of summation a k exponential of j k 2 pi upon capital n into small n and now i if i enclose this if i enclose this so what do i have is this is the equation that we know very well know what is this equation you know it what is this equation this is the synthesis equation the synthesis equation of the discrete time fourier series this is a synthesis equation for the discrete time fourier series okay okay the next now have a look now have a look in the continuous time Fourier series if you talk about a major difference so in the continuous time Fourier series you had what you had an infinite summation whereas in the in the discrete time you have a finite interval for summation so I would write this in continuous time uh, infinite interval of summation in the discrete time we have a finite interval finite interval of summation now if you remember again if you remember again what did we had we had the issues of convergence convergence in continuous time so based on the values of n you the larger you take the interval the larger uh, the the best approximation is the convergence to the original signal over here in the discrete time you have what you have no problems of convergence the each and every signal in the form of fourier series would converge to the original signal right so so over here we had problems of convergence and then we had you know ways and we we, we talked about a different uh, conditions for which convergence existed let that go over here in the discrete time we don't have no problem of convergence excuse the writing you know this which means what that the series will always converge no problems of convergence means what now this i would write over here the series will always converge to the original signal in the continuous time we had problems you know them very well how to solve them you know them very well sorry so the next thing now the coefficient a k the coefficient a k we also need to know about this four coefficient a k so again i am not going to prove them over here as we did the proof is the same as we did in the uh, discrete in the continuous time case we took the equations we multiplied it with an exponential of negative jk omega naught n then we took the integration over here we will take the summation in the brackets you would have something that would exist for k not equal to n zero similarly over here we have something for k equal to zero you can do the proof yourself you can do the proof yourself and i would write him over here the final thing the final thing is that my a k would become 1 over n a k would be 1 over n summation x of n exponential of negative j k you write omega naught you write 2 pi upon n 
into small n. This interval, uh, in the continuous time case, we had integration over one period t. Over here, we would have a summation over one period n. Now, you would be getting confused why this is n, this should be k, this should not be k because we are talking about one period and period is reference of time and the reference of time is with respect to n. So, that's why I've written n over here. So, this is another equation which you can very easily prove yourself. Okay, you know that I'm very weak in mathematics, so don't throw me to the proofs, fine? This is the, the, the analysis equation. This is the analysis equation of the wave. Is that fine? Okay, so the difference in the Fourier coefficients are what? The difference, I will tell you, you know them, but I will tell you again. The difference is basically because of what? Because of, because of the different nature of the exponential signals. The different nature of the harmonically related complex exponentials. What is the difference so that we are discussing over here? Let's say consider this analysis equation. Consider the equation x of n, right? x of n is the summation over one period a k exponential of j k omega naught n. Now you can take any values of this n, right? So let's say I take the values from k equal to 0. So if I have to take from k equal to 0, so the ending point would be n minus 1. So which means that say I have my x of n is, is the summation from k equal, uh, k equal to 0 to n minus 1. So this includes one period, right? And then you have exponential a k exponential of j k omega naught n. Isn't it like this? It is. Or if, if I'm directly writing in the form of a phi k, so just to just to do what? Just to simplify it. Exponential may writing be, may be different, may be a little tough. Phi k of n. Phi k of n. So now if I expand this, if I expand this, so have a look, I would have an a0 phi k of 0. Isn't it like this? Phi 0 of n because k is equal to 0. So phi 0 of n, yes. Then you have plus a1 phi 1 of n. Then you have plus a2 phi 2 of n plus up to plus where would you go to n minus 1 so you would have plus a of n minus 1 into phi n minus 1 of n is this fine till here it is now i said that i'm taking the interval from 0 to negative 1 let's say you say you say that you are not taking this interval you are taking it from 1 so again let's say x of n is now the interval is from 1 to you would have to take it till n then so you have from 1 to n so again a k phi k of n so again if i expand this so i would have an a1 phi phi 1 of n plus a2 phi 2 of n plus up to plus you have an a n minus 1 phi n minus 1 of n and the final term would be plus phi capital N of n multiplied a capital N. This is the case. If you have a look, let's say these are two different equations, 1 and 2. The left hand sides are representing the same thing. So does this not mean that the right hand side would be the same? But what is different in the right hand side? So if you have a look, this has a term, this term that this equation does not have and this second equation has this term which the first one does not have. Is that clear till here? It is. So what can I write is, what can I write is, I can remove a little space from here first. So I can say that I have these different terms, different 
terms right but we know that but we know that what that 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 the and i removed that that the signal would repeat themselves we know that i could write i could write that phi 0 is equal to phi of n phi of 0 is equal to phi of n and this you know it we have seen it previously right phi 0 is equal to phi of n so have a look over here we have a phi 0 over here we have a phi n so if we know that the left hand sides are also equal x of n is equal to x of n the rest of the terms are also equal and now phi 0 of n is also equal to phi n of n so would it not mean would it not mean that that what that my a 0 is also equal to a n and this was what i was interested in my a0 is also equal to a n this is what the thing is now this is only for a0 is equal to a n if i generalize it if i do what if i generalize it if i write a generally over here so my generally would be what that my a k any Fourier coefficient would be equal to a k plus capital N this is what the difference in the discrete time Fourier coefficients and the uh, the continuous time Fourier coefficients is that Fourier coefficients repeat themselves after an interval these Fourier coefficients repeat themselves after an interval you know it very well but let me you know a little bit of writing also and the next point is that this behavior was not shown by Fourier continuous time. This behavior was not shown. So I would write a not equal to continuous time Fourier coefficient. This not equal to mean that this behavior of repeating after the time period was not shown by the continuous time Fourier coefficients. We could say that AK are periodic with period N. If a function is periodic with period n, we say that these Fourier coefficients, that is a k, are periodic with period capital N. That is it. That is it. That should be it for this video. What did we discuss? We discussed the synthesis equation, the analysis equation, the discrete time Fourier series. We saw the different nature of the discrete time complex exponential then the continuous time complex exponential that leads to what that leads to the point that the Fourier coefficients are also periodic with period n repetition occurs you know that very well I end this video over here let's say we have some examples in the next video so that's it thank you very much for watching see you in the next lecture very soon inshallah till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you do remember me in your prayers Goodbye.